At this point, we will review the elements of the story that we just read. Now, if it is that you have not identified the elements independently, please pause this video, take the time, identify the elements, and come back. Once you have, let's begin. Now, in looking at the story projected before you, this is the beginning of the story. Which element of the story do we see here? If you said setting, you would be correct. Now, the overall setting in this paragraph is the community of Parkway, or should I say the Parkway community. Now, the story begins with Harry sitting in his room, looking down at the Johnson house. As the story progresses, we see Harry leaving his room going over to the Johnson's house to find out if, or rather, to save Mary Beth. Now, or what we're looking at here is our exposition. And as we said before, the exposition is the beginning of our story. The writer chose to begin this story using, or rather providing, a description of the setting. Then we look at the second paragraph. If we look at the second paragraph, what information is presented? We see the characters. So, in this story, we have Harry, who can be called the protagonist of the story. He's the main character. Then we have Mary Beth. But it must be noted that we have never actually met Mary Beth. Mary Beth is only mentioned in this story. And so, she is one of our minor characters. Also, we're able to picture Mary Beth through Harry, through the description that's provided in this paragraph. And finally, at the end of the story, we meet Harry's father. We do not get a description, as in a physical description, of Harry's father, but from his tone, he seems to be a father that is very caring. Then we have what is called our climax. This is where we are not sure what is going to happen next. And so in this story, it can be said that the climax is when Harry rushes out goes over to Mary Beth's house, intended to save Mary Beth. As the reader, we're unable, we're left in, what's the word? A state of unknown, wondering what Harry will find once he enters the house. That creates a type of suspense. That can therefore be identified as the highest point or the, yes, the, the most exciting point in the story. Then we look at the conflict. Now, this story is very, very tricky because the conflict is somewhat a little hard to identify. The issue in the story is that Mary, 
Harry believes Mary Beth is being attacked, and that should be a K. And so because Harry believes Mary Beth is being attacked, he rushes out of his home to go and save her. That creates some kind of conflict. Now, if we look at the point of view from which the story is being told, we see from the use of the third person pronouns, he, she, they, that, the point of view is the third person perspective. Now, although we hear Harry's thoughts, we do not get the thoughts of all the characters, or we do not get the perspective from all the characters. And because of that, we can say this is an example of third person observant. Finally, the story ends with dialogue. Now we have to remember that dialogue is important. However, it must serve a purpose. So when we are writing our short story, we do not just put dialogue in our story just to put dialogue. We include dialogue in order to share some type of information. In this story, dialogue is used to let the reader know that Mary Beth and her family were murdered 16 years ago. From the conversation between Harry and his father, we are able to identify that no one has lived in that house for some time. And so we can suspect or rather conclude that the person Harry has been seen all this time might be a ghost. Or we can question if Mary Beth is truly dead. No. With this in mind, we come to our resolution. And our resolution leaves us hanging. There are so many unanswered questions. There's a twist at the end of the story. None of us would have known that this was the case, that Mary Beth might be suspected as being a ghost. That must have been the last thought that you had. Now, this is a technique the writer uses to present the information in the story. The writer uses this technique to leave the, the reader wondering Leave the reader questioning. Leave the reader surprised. And it is a way to engage the reader's imagination. Now that we have covered all the elements that we would have identified in the story, now we move on to how do we write our short story?